Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. It is March the 11th, 2018. And we're going to be looking a little bit at Afrin today. And hopefully this week I can do an in-depth look at Afrin, what's going on. It is more than a crime against humanity. When we look at East Gouda and we consider the things that are going on there and how that the U.S. State Department is putting so much attention on East Gouda, uh, and we see the evidence that the jihadists that are backed by the United States and other NATO allies there in East Gouda are actually keeping prisoner those civilians that would like to flee and go to safe areas while Syria and Russia deal with the jihadists that are there. But the jihadists will not let them leave. Uh, only in rare instances are we seeing anyone able to leave. In fact, today, very few are leaving East Gouda. But while the world focuses on Syria and Russia, who are trying to take back the land from NATO-backed, Saudi-backed, Qatar-backed, Turkish-backed jihadist, it has become a nightmare in northern Syria in the town of Avran. The Kurdish people who are there, not only the Kurds, the Yazdis, the Christians that are all living there in peace, uh, millions of people in this one region there, and the world has gone totally silent about the evils that President Erdogan of Turkey is doing against these civilians there. And not just Erdogan. Uh, and he may say here, Turkey, this is on RT News here, uh, I'll kind of show you their emblem there, Turkey not a NATO country, question, Erdogan slams allies refusal to support his offensive in Syria's Afrin. Well, you know what, we might find out that that's a big fat lie, that there is indirect support with Turkish President Erdogan for the deaths and murders of civilians in the unprecedented and unparalleled attack that is happening there on this poor people here in this province here. Let's take a look a little bit of what it says in the article here by RT. It says, Turkey's leader has scorched NATO allies over their failure to support his counter-terrorist operation in Kurdish-held Syrian region of Afrin, but expressed gratitude that they at least had no guts to openly oppose Ankara. Well, you know what, Mr. Erdogan, I am an American citizen and I do have the guts to stand here and openly oppose what you are doing there. Uh, you know, it may not be a big voice, but I guarantee you one thing, we're willing to speak out about the genocide that you are conducting against the people of Afrin, the Kurds. And this is what's interesting to me. It's very sad that the United States, and even for the, that matter, that the Russian president, uh, Putin, is silent on the matter either. And in fact, someone should come to these people's aid. After all, they were the, probably the best fighters against ISIS. But I can see why the U.S. deep state will never come to the aid of the Kurds because that kind of undermined the entire plan that they had with ISIS in the first place, and that was to overthrow Bashar al-Assad. But, as I said, not so fast. What does he say? Hey, NATO, where are you? We're fighting in so much... NATO, Turkey is not a NATO country. Where are you? This is what Erdogan was saying. You've invited NATO member states to Afghanistan, Erdogan said. But he acted like no one is there supporting his cause against the Kurds in Afrin. Not only the Kurds, but remember the Christians and the Yazdis. And the entire NATO alliance is silent. Well, in one way, yeah, they are silent. But you know, he says that they're not helping. Oh, yes, they are too. Free Syrian Army. This article right here on Yenai Safak uh, called World, uh, this particular article, article that I picked up, and I wasn't even looking. I just happened to stumble across this article. This was, of course, on January 20th, excuse me, March the 11th, Turkey launched Operation Olive Branch to clear the YPG and the PKK uh, Daesh terrorists from Afrin. Isn't it kind of funny how he throws that in there with Daesh? No, they're the ones that were taking out Daesh. Now, March 11th, this article post here, and it says here, the Turkish armed forces and what? Make, I want to make sure you guys can see this. I'm going to put this as big a bold of print as I can get on the screen here. Uh, there's one of their little bomb pictures there in the background. 
It says, Turkish armed forces and free Syrian army liberated a total of 13 more villages in Syria's northwestern Afrin region as of Sunday. Uh, Mr. Putin, who is the one that trained? Who is the one that has been backing the free Syrian army with logistics and intelligence? Uh, to be able to, to, to do counterattacks against the Syrian government and, of course, their people. It is none other than the United States. So you can go out and RT might publish that stupid article right there where you're claiming that NATO is not behind you and where is the United States? Well, the United States is doing exactly that. They are helping you and that is the deep state, mind you. So I, maybe I'll make a little clarification on that. You know, and this is the shame upon the American peoples or on our government, not the American people, but the government itself, that we would be willing to be backing the Free Syrian Army to help the Turkish army to go in there and take out the Kurdish people, the Yazdis and the Christians. Does anybody that is listening, does anybody know who the Yazdis are? The Yazdis are believed to be the wise men. They are the very descendants of the wise men that came to, to Israel, to Jerusalem, at the very birth of Yeshua, the Mashiach. Yeah, the Yazdis. And they have been butchered by ISIS and now the Turkish government as well and those Christians there. You know, I find it very interesting that all these militants that we are backing as an American government, not to mention the European NATO nations, not to mention Saudi Arabia and Qatar and all these other ungodly nations that are out there murdering the very believers in Yeshua, the Kurds who stand with Israel. You know, this is what gets me. I've got many friends that love Israel and the Kurds are one of the best allies that Israel has in that region. And even Israel is sitting silent. Why isn't Prime Minister Netanyahu saying something? Well, maybe he's too caught up with his own issues right now, but I'll tell you something. You know, well, you know, let me tell you something. Barry Chamish, when I had him on before, he talked about Israel's involvement with ISIS. And I think in Israel we have a deep state as well. You know, that's not the Israeli people. That's not the Jewish people that love God. But there are some very sinister things that are going on to advance causes that are not what the Jewish people want. You know, one day I need to do a, I need to do a message as well as far as the, the state of Israel and the land of Israel. You know, they talk about making this a Jewish state. We have to, for, uh, this is, that kind of bothers me and I'll have to go into it later, but I'll just kind of give you just a quick thought on this. You know, Israel is 12 tribes. And not all 12 tribes are Jewish tribes. So Israel cannot be a Jewish state. It has to be Israel. Because God is going to have all 12 tribes return to their homeland. So therefore, too, not all of the land of Israel belongs just to the Jewish people per se. Every tribe has its own land that was given to it. Now, I appreciate the fact that the tribe of Judah is there, and I appreciate the fact that we have a state of Israel. There's a lot more to these things that are happening than what people realize. Anyway, back to what's going on here. Uh, so clearly, <clears throat> uh, they, they're definitely being backed by the free Syrian army, the Turkish government. So Erdogan is once again lying to the world because the free Syrian army goes nowhere without U.S. backing and intelligence and also air support, etc. The Free Syrian Army is well backed by the U.S. So Mr. Erdogan, lie all you want. You know very well that you were promised a great deal in the New World Order so long as you do the dirty work for NATO. So go ahead and pretend a little bit more, why don't you? And back, in fact, I just saw this one that came out on Twitter here. Barack Ayadeen posted, or uh, I don't know if he posted or if he's uh, original post or someone else did. It says, one million Kurdish, Assyrian, and Yazdi civilians in Afrin are under threat 
of genocide by the combined forces of Turkey, ISIS, al-Nusra, and al-Qaeda at this very hour. This came out only like, a, I think it was like an hour or two ago. <clears throat> Don't forget the Free Syrian Army though as well. The world must step in and repay those who have been defeating ISIS on behalf of humanity. Well, Mr. Ayadeen, I really appreciate that you put this out there as well, but I will have to tell you, they're not going to step in because the Kurds did something that really angered uh, NATO and some of their allies and some that are not members of NATO that were using ISIS militants to overthrow the Syrian government, as was leaked in John Kerry's uh, famous audio recording where he was meeting with some of the so-called Free Syrian Army people there and said that ISIS was doing a very good job. We sat back and we were waiting for them to collapse the Assad government. But of course the Kurds came in and Russia, he actually just says Russia came in and it changed everything. Yeah, so did the Kurds. All right, <clears throat> moving on to another one here as well. This was very interesting. Apparently Turkey-backed jihadists have abducted two civilians in Afrin, dressed them up in uniforms for the camera to say they have captured PKK members. I'm going to play the video. This is, this is a very interesting video right here, friends. Let me kind of get rid of the volume there. We'll blow it up. Uh, so the Special Fortress cap captured members of the PKK, except when they captured them, uh, they were not in uniform, as we can plainly see here. They were civilians. So how did they end up uh, in a uniform is very interesting uh, because there they are now, the same two people. You may not be able to see it that well, but I can clearly see it's definitely the same two people. Now they have them in uniforms. <clears throat> you know, the Turkish government will do everything they can to lie to the world. You know, they genocide the Armenians, and I know Erdogan hated when the Pope of Rome said that, but he said it too, you know. I don't have a whole lot of... <clears throat> I'll hold my peace there about that for the moment. Moving on here as well, this was also interesting today. Germany and an unregistered demonstration over 200 people against the Turkish offensive in Afrin escalated and led to, a, led to a huge brawl between Kurds and Turks at the airport in Dusseldorf. Oh, wow, that, that was something in, in itself, because let me tell you something, friends. If you ever notice anywhere in the world you go where the Turkish, and, and I know not all Turkish people are like this, but it seems like anytime someone protests or says something against the Turkish government, there is always violence that follows. When Erdogan visited America, his thugs attacked journalists. Uh, they attacked Kurdish protesters when he visited America. It's, it's always unbelievable the violence that follows those that are in support of President Erdogan. Now again, I appreciate there are Turkish people though that are not like that and very much for humanity, such as Aaron Erdem. Uh, but oddly enough, Aaron Erdem though is actually a Kurdish man as well, but a Turkish citizen. Uh, closing up here in just a second here. This was another one. A doctor in Afrin sends, let me back this up just for a moment. He sends a message to the worldwide international community about the great danger about one million civilians face in Afrin. Let me, let me play this for you. I'm going to lower the volume. I'll read to you what the doctor is actually saying. Starts off with the people of Afrin have all gathered in Afrin city center, center because they're trying to get away from the Turkish uh, bombardment. There is no place to stay and there is nothing to eat, he says. On top of that, there is no telecommunication network because why? They took both of them out that were there. He said the two uh, GSM networks operating in Afrin have both been destroyed that, because they don't want the world to see what they're doing. They don't want the world to see what the, the, Turkish, the Turkish military, the Free Syrian Army, the, the Al-Qaeda and Al-Nusra and ISIS militants are doing to the civilians of this town. They're going to rape, pillage, murder children, women and all. Mm -hmm. 
Signal of one of the cell phone operators returned to work today, but it was very weak. Water has also been cut off in Afrin since last Sunday after Turkish back groups took control of Madanki Dam. Because Afrin residents rely on the Madanki Dam for water, residents are now resorted to rely on wells for water, which is not enough and is contaminated and contains substances that are harmful for children and will cause disease among children. The only access route from Aleppo to Afrin is Ziyara Crossing Gate, which has been targeted regularly, and that has prevented fuel from reaching Afrin. A fuel shortage has in turn caused electricity shortage and caused problems for bakeries and without supplies soon for hospitals as well. If fuels run out while the supply line is cut out, cut off, the people face grave danger. The people face, as Erdogan has threatened to bedij Afrin little by little, it's taking shape. This is a medical doctor, friends. See him at the surgery rooms there. That means in a few days the supply will be cut off. We are talking about one million civilians living in Afrin. Many were displaced to begin with and now they are displaced once more. They flock from villages to the city and supplies here are extremely insufficient. The people in Afrin need food, drink and medicine. People in, uh, and all those are slowly running out. And all that will open the way mass murder in Afrin. Those extremist groups are closing in on Afrin and some, some places are only two to three kilometers away. You want to put a spotlight on something, State Department of the United States? Why don't you put a spotlight on Afrin? You know, instead of trying to glorify your white helmets who also have been known to work with Al-Qaeda and Al-Nusra, terrorist groups that have beheaded children before, not to mention the other crimes against humanity they have done. Why don't you put a spotlight on Afrin? Why don't you go to this, go with this doctor and put a spotlight there? Or is it more important to fulfill those things that General Wesley Clark, the true patriot of America, revealed to the citizens of the United States back during the time of the Iraq War that the United States and their allies were going to take down seven nations in five years. Yeah, the time frame is way off, I realize that, but Iraq was first, Syria, and of course you're busy with Syria now for the last six, seven years, seven years I guess now, Lebanon, it's interesting some of these places, Libya, Egypt of course fell as well, I don't know if that was part of the plan, but you took that one down too, Sudan, we'll have to go to Sudan next, there's a lot of things happening in Sudan already, here a true American patriot, General Wesley Clark, tells the entire American people, that they were going to destroy Syria as well as Iraq, Iran, and Lebanon. And then people are so forgetful and blinded that instead you're willing to take the mainstream media propaganda or because you have a few uh, people out there that are supposed to be uh, alternative media that as well as siding with the propaganda to destroy Syria. And what really upsets me is when Israelis that are alternative media are siding with the genocide of a nation. You know, Erdogan was not killing his people before this war started. And of course, I know there was a lot of false propaganda that there were peaceful protests and Erdogan began to kill all the people. No, they were not peaceful. They had already shipped weapons in to them and it had become a violent protest. They just let you see in the propaganda what you wanted to see. But again, 
The American public has forgotten General Wesley Clark. You forgot what he said. The true patriot. We're forgetting. We have, we have uh, even senators that know that the lies that are being told to us. Because why? They're not very famous. They're not very popular. But instead, we've been cowing down and believing all the propaganda. And as I said, Israelis with alternative media that would support the war against the country that is the mothers of Israel. Are you serious? Is this really? I mean, Christian ministers that would support the war against Syria. Have you forgotten that the roots of your beliefs is founded upon those laws given by Moses. And of course, Moses is also, his four mothers are part of the Syrian people. You know, one of the few secular nations in the Middle East was Syria, where there was a tolerance and an acceptance of Christians, Muslims, and Jews until we turned it upside down. Why is still beyond me? Other than I kind of have an idea of a Babylonian kingdom that needs to be revived. You know, the Babylonians used to have from the Euphrates all the way down to the Nile River too. Don't forget that. New World Order needs Jerusalem though, doesn't it? What, is the, what, are the, what are the Jewish people going to have to pay? What price are they going to have to pay so that you can keep this up? Very sad. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Keep you up to date on what's going on if you want to know the truth. If you don't want to know the truth, there are some channels out there that will tickle your ears and lie to you. They won't tell you what the Word of God says. Well, they might whitewash what the Word of God says. Like one guy said one time that the mothers of Israel were Lebanon from Lebanon. <laughs> that, that blew me away. It really blew me away. Uh, but anyway, we love you guys. God bless you. Keep us in your prayers there. We have a lot we're going, going through right now. Uh, and we do need your prayers. Shalom.